So in this video we're going to be learning how to create our own simple server in Python. So our server is going to be really simple, it's just going to take whatever we send it and it's going to send it back to us. After we create this simple server we're going to create a chat server and then after that we might even create a peer to peer version of the chat server where there's no central server and every peer connects to each other and can send messages without there having to be a central server. So let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is we need to create a file so I'm going to call it chat.py and I'm going to import the socket library. When we want to communicate over a network we have to use what are called sockets. So in Python to create a socket we import the socket library then we create a variable I'm going to call it sock and we set it equal to socket.socket .socket because we're accessing the socket library and the socket method within that. And then we pass the socket method to parameters. So we say socket.af underscore inet and socket.sock underscore stream. The first parameter just tells the socket that it's going to send the information using IP version 4 as opposed to IP version 6. And sock stream just means that we have a TCP connection. If we wanted a UDP connection we would say sock underscore dgram. But we're going to say sock underscore stream because we're creating a TCP connection. Next what we want to do is we want to bind our socket to an address and a port. So we say sock.bind and we pass a python tuple which is just two more parentheses. And then the first parameter in the parentheses is the address. And the second parameter is the port. So the port is going to be port 10,000. That's just the port I chose to run it on. And then the IP address is going to be 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 because it will make our server available over any IP address that's configured on the server. After we bind to the port and the address we want to listen so we say sock.listen and we pass in a variable of the number of pending connections we want to allow so I'm just going to say one and then what we can do is we can create a, a loop to actually handle the connections so we create a variable called c another variable called a and we set it equal to sock.accept and this just means we accept the connection this function returns the connection which we've called c and the client's address which we'll call a and up here we can create a variable called connections and we can set it equal to an empty list and whenever we get a new connection we can say connections.append and we can append c which is our connection and we can then print out connections. So if I was to run this now it would actually work but it wouldn't perform very well because if multiple people tried to connect at once the server would only be able to handle one of them at a time so to fix that we're going to use threads. So on a computer a thread is just something that's managed by the operating system that allows us to do multiple things at once within our program. So to use threads in python we have to import the threading library. And then every time we create a connection, after we accept the connection, we're going to create a new thread. So we're going to call our thread C thread for connection thread, and it's going to be equal to threading.thread because we're accessing the threading library and the thread method within that. And we have to pass this method the name of the function that is going to run when we run our thread. So to do that, we say target equals and the name of our function, which in this case is going to be handler which is going to be the name of the function that handles our connections. After that, what we do is we say cthread.daemon equals true. By setting this parameter to true, it just means that the program will be able to exit regardless of if there's any threads still running because normally when you want to close a program, if you have any threads that are still open, the operating system won't let you close the program until all the threads are done. By setting this property to true, we're able to close our program regardless of any threads that are still running. Then we can say cthread dot start and that will start our thread and then up here what we want to do is to find the function handler and it's going to accept a variable called c as a parameter we just want to come in here and say args equals and we create a tuple and we say args equals c a because we want to pass the connection and the address to our handler and then what we'll do is we'll actually come up here and we'll accept the address as well so what we're going to do when we handle a connection is we're going to receive data from that connection so to handle the connection we're going to create a loop that will run in the background because it's running in a different thread and we'll say while true data is equal to c.recv c is our connection and we're saying we're receiving data on the connect from the connection and we're going to say the maximum amount of data we can receive is 1024 bytes next what we're going to do is we're going to have a way to break out of our loops so we're going to say if not data break and this receive function is what's called a blocking function which means the loop won't run until we actually receive some data so after we receive some data we can send it back to the user and we're going to send it back to every user who's connected so to do that what we're going to do is say for connection in connections because you'll remember we store the connections in this list we're going to say connection.send and we're going to send back the data but we can only send raw bytes so we have to say send bytes and then pass data into that function to convert the data from a string to bytes and if we're going to break out of this loop that means we're done with the connection so we're just going to say c.close and before we do that we're going to say connections.remove c and we'll just create a global variable called connections that'll give us access to this list so if i save this 
and I run that, I say python3 chat.py. Now you can see our server's running. So now on another server, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect to that by using the telnet command. I say telnet, the IP address of our server and the port. Telnet just allows us to connect to remote computers. I hit enter on that. Now you can see I'm back on the server. We have a connection. And if I was to say hello world, the server sent that back to us. So here I have another computer down here. If I want to connect from that, I do the same thing again. I say telnet, I give the IP address and the port. You can see that we're connected and our connections all have their own thread, which should provide much better performance if our server had to handle lots of connections. And now if I said hello again, you can see it printed out hello again to me and it also sent hello again to the other client that was connected. Because on our server what we're doing is we're going through the list of connections and we're sending the data to every one of those connections whenever we receive some. So if I was to send something from here, hello client 2, it sends it back to me but it also sends it to the client 2. You can see I've disconnected from both of these servers and now I'll just make some new lines in there. I'll connect to it one more time. Now you can see we only have one address connected because we deleted it from our connections. So it looks like our server's working. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be learning how to create an actual chat server. And after that, we're going to learn how to create a peer-to-peer -peer chat server, building upon what we've already learned in this video. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. If you have any questions, don't forget to email me at francis at but that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.